वेलकम गाइस आई एम परिंदा सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन टू रिसीव रेगुलर नोटिफिकेशंस रिगार्डिंग द कंप्यूटर साइंस टॉपिक्स एंड टेक्निकल जॉब अपडेट्स हेलो गाइस इन दिस वीडियो ऑफ कंप्यूटर नेटवर्क्स वी आर गोइंग टू सी वन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज सीआईडीआर दैट स्टैंड्स फॉर क्लासलेस इंटर डोमेन राउटिंग नाउ इन आवर प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑफ कंप्यूटर नेटवर्क्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन क्लासफुल एड्रेसिंग इन डिटेल um we have seen all about classful addressing like the we have seen about all the classes like class a class b class c class d and class e addresses in detail we have seen the range of all the classes we have seen the host ids network ids uh, the prefixes fine we have learned all about classful addressing in that video in case you have not visited that video yet i will give the link of that video in the description you can go through that so that you will get to know all about classful addressing and in that video we have already discussed about the differences between classful and classless addressing also so you can have the whole idea there and now in this video we are going to see what is the main use of classless addressing and again we will see all about classless addressing in this video now the first question that arises is though we were having classful addressing what was the need of this classless addressing so in the very beginning we were having only one type of addressing that is classful addressing of ip addresses but what the drawback was that what we used to happen in classful addressing for example see this is the whole kind of network we are having in classful addressing what we used to do is this whole network was divided into different classes simple division was there proper division was there for class a class b class c class d class e so what used to happen is whenever any organization is asking for or any organization needs any specific amount of ip addresses what we used to do is we used to assign one whole class of addresses to that organization now assigning the whole class of address means we have to assign the whole range of that class if i am assigning class a addresses to that organization i am assigning the whole range of addresses that lies in the class a to that organization so what used to happen is uh, there were also cases that if an organization needs only 50 or 100 addresses then also we were assigning thousands or lakhs of addresses whole addresses to that organization so there was wastage of ip addresses in case of classful addressing you are getting means irrespective of the actual need of any individual or organization we used to assign the ip addresses not as per the need but as per the availability of number of ip addresses in any class fine so that was the main drawback of classful addressing but in this case of classless addressing that drawback is overcome in this what we are doing now is we will assign only those or only that number of ip addresses that is needed so this is known as classless addressing classless addressing means in this the ip addresses will not be having any class any specific class won't be there like class a class b class c no such classes will be there in this what will happen that simply we are having one network whatever network we are having in this we won't be having class we can say that there will be specific blocks specific simply specific blocks of addresses uh, block 1 block 2 block 3 so simply what we will do we, uh, whenever any organization needs any ip address we can simply assign any block of address whatever amount that organization needs we can simply assign those many um, number of addresses in a block of kind of we can assign any specific any a uh, small amount of block of the address to that organization fine so we can say that in this in classful addressing what used to happen is my whole ip address was divided into two in case of classful addressing the initial one was the whole ip address the prefix of the ip address used to be network id and the later part used to be host id in this case we don't have any specific network class so in case of classless addressing the whole ip address will be divided into two but the first part instead of network id we will call it as block id it will denote that which uh, which specific block i am assigning fine so in this classless addressing again our ip addresses are divided into two the former part or the beginning part will be our block id and the later part will be our host id fine so this is the main thing 
here in case of uh, classless addressing as you can see here again these are ip addresses right we know that the size of the ip address is 32 bytes so it will be as it is so total 32 bytes will be divided in such a way that the beginning part will be our block id and the later part will denote our host id so this is one of the important points and second important point also i told you that in classless addressing we will be having blocks of addresses instead of any specific class fine we won't be having specific class that's why it is known as classless we will be simply having the blocks of addresses now how we can denote the classless addresses they can be denoted in this way that is a dot b dot c dot d slash n how we used to uh, represent classful addresses in case of classful addresses we used to define it as simply as a dot b dot c dot d fine we have al already seen dotted notation so dot dotted notation was a dot b dot c dot d but in case of classless addresses what will be extra this we will be having that is a dot b dot c dot d this will be there but slash n will be there so what this slash n this slash n is actually known as subnet mask this is known as you can say that this is mask fine so this n will be extra in case of classless and this n is known as mask. Now you can call it as mask or you can call it as um, what we can say it is the number of bits of the block id. Fine. So this n is what you can either call it mask of this address or this n is actually it represents the number of bits for the block id. Fine. So these are the questions that I have written. These are the types of questions that can be asked in your exams, in your uh, academic exam or in case of uh, competitive exams also. They can give you any IP address like this. See, this is one classless IP address I have written that is 200.10.20.40 slash 28. So whenever slash n, this form is given to you, you can say that this is my classless addressing because mask is given. We know that in classful addressing, we were not uh, using any kind of mask there was no need of mask but whenever mask is given you can say that this is our classless address fine so this kind of classless address or uh, classless ip address is given and we have to find out these things the, in the exam they can ask you to find out any of these things so we will see with the help of this example that how to find it out now as i told this slash n is what this is either uh, you can call it mask or number of bits in the block id fine in the block id so if i say here this this block id will be simply we can write down this is mask so simply this will be directly our block id 28 now out of we know that the whole ip address is of 32 bytes now if 28 is here so host id will be 32 minus 28 that is equal to how many four fine so four bits will be for host id total 32 bits block id will be of 28 bits so host id will be of 4 bit now first of all they are asking that what is the mask here now the mask here we know that the mask here is 28 but instead of simply writing 28 we if we want to denote it in the dotted notation we know that how we are writing the dotted notation dotted notation means it will be octet of 4 there will be four octets octet like eight bits dot eight bits dot eight bit dot eight bit so simply 28 our mask is 28 that means what simply you can remember it like that um, our mask is 28 that means what in our mask the number of ones will be 28 fine in the dotted notation simple thing that you need to remember is number of ones will be 28 so how we, uh, we can write it eight eight threes are 24 so first three octet will be all one one two three four five six seven eight two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight so eight plus eight plus eight 24 eights are already done but we want 28 eights so four more ones will be there and how many remaining bits are uh, four so those four bits will be zero got it so we can say that this is our mask 28 mask 28 that means 28 number of ones will be there simple as that fine so if mask is asked you can directly write it like this based on this n then bits in the block id we have already determined here bits in the block id is 28 
bits in the host ID is 4. Now if asked about total number of blocks. Now we know that how we can find out total number of blocks. We, we got that the number of bits that is used to uh, represent block ID it is 28. So the number of total number of blocks will be 2 raised to 28. Fine. And similarly total number of hosts can be host ID can be represented in 4 bits. So total number of hosts will be 2 raised to 4. Fine. Then we are having network ID or block ID. This is the most important part. This is frequently asked in the questions that you will be given one classless addressing. One classless address, whenever you are given one classless address, that means you are given two things. One is the IP address and one, one is the mask. Now, if these two things are given, how we can find out the network ID or the block ID? Fine, how we can find out the network ID in which network this ID, this IP address is present. So, it is very simple how to find it out. See again, whenever this address, classless address is given to you, you can say that you are given two things. Fine, the first thing is the IP address and the second thing is the subnet mask. So, if these two things are given and I want to find out the network ID or the block ID, the simple thing that I need to do is I have to perform and operation between these two. So performing and operation between these two. So the first one, see, um, let's keep it like this only 200.10.20.40. Fine. I want to perform and operation of this and this subnet mask. In the dotted notation, we have written subnet mask as like this. So if I want to represent it like this, this all ones will be 255. Again, all ones, all ones, 255.255. And here, uh, in the four places, we are having one. In the four beginning places, we are having one. And then we are having zero. So, how we can calculate it? Simply, we can calculate it. Uh, it will give me 240. Fine. It will give me, how we can do it? Simple, 2 raised to 0, 2 raised to 1, 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 3. So, simply adding 2 raised to 4 plus 2 raised to 5 plus 2 raised to 6 plus 2 raised to 7, it will give me 240. So, here we will get 240. Now, what I need to do is, simply I need to perform AND function between these two. Now, performing AND function, how we are performing AND function? That whenever both the bits are 1, the answer is 1. Fine. Whenever both the bits are 1, the answer will be 1. Otherwise, it will be 0. Now, get one simple thing that in 255, all are 1s. So, simply it will depend on the number of 1s present in this. So, the number of present, the number of bits present in this will become, is giving me 200. So, remember one simple thing that whenever we are ending and something, we are, whenever we are performing end on something with 255, it will result me it will give me result at this number only because 20, 255 means all ones. So, it will simply depend on the other number. So, in these three cases, we can say that it will be same as 200.10.20 because we are ending it with 255. But in this case, we are ending um, 40 with 240. So, what we can do? We can represent both in again decimal or in again binary and based on that, we can find out. So, how we can represent 40? So, what you need to do is simply you need to represent 40 and uh, 240. So, 240 we are already having that is 4 1s and 4 zeros. Fine. And if I want to represent 40 in binary, I will get 0 0, 1 0 1 and then again all zeros. Now, if I want to perform and on this, and means when, whenever both are 1, we will get 1. So, only in this place both are 1. Apart from that, 1, 0, 1, 0 and all zeros. Yes. So, this is 2 raised to 0, 2 raised to 1, 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 3, 2 raised to 4 and 2 raised to 5. Only the answer will be 2 raised to 5. So, we know that what is 2 raised to 5? 2 raised to 5 gives me 32. So, the answer is 32 here. Simple. So, this 200.10.20.32 is the network ID or the block ID. That means this represents the network in which this IP address is present. Fine. 
so these are the main points that you should know how to find it out i hope you have got the whole idea that in this classless addressing that the network is not divided into class it is simply divided into blocks and those blocks the size of the blocks will be 2 raised to something fine this is one point you have to remember it will be always 2 raised to something and simply whenever any uh, ip address is given to you these questions can be asked and you can find it out ultimate the main point here is to find out how to find out the network id it is very simple so this is how we found out the network id or the block id in which network or in which block this id this specific ip address belongs fine so i hope you have understood the whole concept of masking what is this mask how we can represent the mask and how the mask is useful in finding out the network id so i hope you have got the whole idea regarding classless addressing or cidr i hope you have got the differences between classful and classless and in case you still have any doubt you can always ask in the comment section thank you so much